Hi folks, um, you might have uh, come to this uh, page um, video um, as a result of something I tweeted out yesterday, um, which completely blew up unexpectedly um, about uh, something I put together to help um, a young lad that I um, mentor who, well, you can read it in the tweet here. Um, he has poor literacy skills. He's just started up a landscaping business um, and he uh, really struggles to communicate uh, in written form uh, with his clients. So I put together um, a little uh, script or app, if you like, um, using GPT-3 um, uh, in conjunction with Zapier. Um, and essentially what it does, um, he sends an email to an, a Gmail account that I created, a free Gmail account. Um, uh, so for example, um, something like this that he can uh, write out Sally uh, I am starts work at yours Monday from Dave um, and then about a minute or so later it then responds back to him um, with that message but converted into something that conveys uh, a bit more professionalism in a business context so uh, the example I showed was dear Sally I hope this email finds you well I'm writing to let you know that I'll be starting work with you on Monday really look forward to getting started if you have any questions or need any help with anything, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Best wishes, Dave. Uh, Dave is not his real name, by the way. Um, anyway, since that went out yesterday, there's been a lot of interest in this. Um, and I, I think kind of undeservedly, really, because it's so simple to set this up, um, as you're about to see, um, that I don't know that really I can take the credit for this. Um, but uh, also some other good news is if for any reason um, you don't want to set this up yourself or you find it difficult to do. Um, I've just been having a chat today with the lovely folks at OpenAI who, um, who created GPT-3 um, and we're now going to be having a chat about possibly creating a solution um, for people who might need the, this and hopefully are uh, going to be able to offer that free. Um, so stay tuned on that one. Um, but in the meantime, um, I'm just going to show you how we put this together. So I will write this up as well um, with some kind of instructions um, should be below the video and links to the various bits and pieces that you're going to need. Um, so let's just kind of start with the prerequisites. Uh, what do you need to make this work? So um, nothing very complicated here. The first thing you are going to need is an account with Zapier. Um, and you can absolutely use the free version of Zapier for this. It does have some limitations. Uh, you're limited to 100 tasks per month, maximum of five zaps, um, but which shouldn't be a problem if you're only using it for this. Um, but probably the biggest limitation of the free version is that um, the, it only kind of runs every 15 minutes. And so what that means is that when you're using this, you're going to have to wait a whole 15 minutes before you get your uh, your email back. But yeah, 15 minutes isn't terrible. Um, so yeah, that's Zapier. Just go and sign up for a free account with Zapier. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is um, a Gmail account. And I wouldn't recommend using your own Gmail account for this um, because the way this is set up <laughs> is that essentially it responds um, to every email that comes into this account. And so you wouldn't want this uh, auto responding uh, to uh, every email that comes into your regular account. So just go and set up uh, another free Gmail account um, with uh, my, the, the one I use has, has kind of got a name like Bot Writer, but you can call it whatever you want, just something that someone else hasn't uh, taken. So yeah, just go and set up a Gmail account. Um, the other thing you're going to need is an account with OpenAI. Um, so you just kind of go and register an account uh, on their website. And again, that's free. And when you log in uh, for the first time, if you've never used this before, let me just uh, log in here. So yeah, if you've never used, um, if you've never used it before, um, uh, OpenAI give you $18 worth of free credits to use. And for something as simple as this, where it's not producing uh, uh, huge amounts of text, um, uh, that $18 is going to last you a fair while. Um, and even once you run out of the free credits, um, this really isn't that expensive to use. Um, it's basically around two cents a token 
Um, and then one token is around about seven words. So um, yeah, you shouldn't find this too expensive. Um, once you've registered an account with uh, OpenAI um, for their API, um, then what you just need to do is just generate uh, an API key. So you just click on this button here, create new secret key. That will give you a kind of a long string of characters, which is essentially just like your password um, so that you can go and use this on Zapier. Um, now you want to store that somewhere and keep that safe because once it's been created, um, you can't see it again on the OpenAI website. Um, you can only you can only delete it or create a new one. So go and uh, save that to a, a document or something on your uh, device. Um, and then the other thing you're going to need um, is a Zap um, that has been created uh, by somebody called Yohi, who is wonderful. Um, strongly recommend you go and follow him uh, on Twitter if you um, have any interest at all in uh, GPT-3, machine learning, or AI. Um, and he's created um, a kind of a Zapier integration for GPT-3. Now, this isn't official. Um, there is no official yet. I'm sure there will be soon, but there is not yet an official integration between GPT-3 and Zapier. So Yohi created this um, uh, as a way to do it. Um, you can actually do it. And I have been using GPT-3 with Zapier for quite a while now, um, just by creating what's called a webhook. Um, but, um, and that's really easy to do if you've got any experience of knowing how to make API requests and uh, using webhooks. Um, but if you're not technically minded, um, then just going and uh, going to this link here, which I'll give you, and then clicking this bit here that says accept invite and build a zap, um, it will give you just what you need. So, um, okay, so let me just talk you through this process um, step by step. So we've created a Gmail account. We've got our API key from OpenAI. Um, we've clicked to get this um, uh, this unofficial Zapier integration. Um, so uh, let me just go and log into my Zapier account. Okay, so I am now logged into my Zapier account. Um, if you've just uh, created a new one, um, then yours won't have any zaps in it. It's just going to be empty. Um, just click on here, create a new zap. Um, now, when you do that, first thing I would suggest you do is um, uh, give your Zapper name. So just click on this little thing up the top here and you can call it, I don't know, something like Bot Writer, um, whatever name you want to give it. OK, and then uh, you'll see that this is opened up now. It's asking for uh, the trigger. Uh, and so the trigger is going to be when an email is received into this Gmail account that we've just created. So all you need to do is either select Gmail from the list down here, or if you don't see it there, then you can just type in, oops, just type in Gmail, and then it will come up as the top option there. Um, and then you see there's a box here, event. Um, and so what we are going to do is say new email triggers when a new email arrives in the specified mailbox. So we select that, and then we press continue. And then you choose your Gmail account. Um, now, you can see my Gmail has a few different Gmail accounts listed here. Um, if you're doing this for the first time, um, then you're going to need to click on here, uh, connect a new account. Um, and then it's just going to ask you to log in and authorize access to your Gmail account. Um, so I'm just going to uh, select the one that I've already created. Actually, not that one. Select that one there. OK, and now it's asking for label or mailbox. And what we need to do is just click into this box here and click on label mailbox. And we want to select this, which is inbox. Um, so that way, it's only going to be triggered for newer emails coming into the inbox of this Gmail account. Once you've done that, uh, just click continue. OK, now the next step of this is to test the trigger. And what I would suggest you do before you test the trigger is to send an email from your normal email account to the new Gmail account that you've just created so that there is something actually sitting in uh, the inbox um, from an email account that you can receive emails from. Um, so uh, otherwise, there won't be anything to test here. So um, now in this case, there should already be an email sitting in the uh, inbox of that account. So I'm just going to click test here. Right, and here we go. 
So you can see um, I've got a message here that's come in. Um, and so it gives you, um, once it runs that test, it then gives you kind of all the details of that uh, email as it comes in. I'm probably gonna have to blur a lot of this out because there's kind of compromising uh, private information in there. So um, yeah, sorry, if you can't see any of that. But um, yeah, that, that will show you the email that's been sent into that account. We click continue. So that's the first step done, which is the trigger. Um, now, um, the next thing we're going to do, I'm actually going to jump ahead a little bit here. Um, the next thing we're going to do, you remember um, I told you that we need to go and uh, set up this um, unofficial uh, integration, Yohi's uh, unofficial integration between GPT-3 and uh, Zapier. Um, so um, you are now going to go and select that integration from here. So we type in Open AI. And this is the one you want, which is version 1.1, which is the latest version. Um, so all you have to do is then click on that. Um, and again, if you're using that for the first time, um, you may well have to set that up and put in uh, the API key that you got from OpenAI to authorize that to access your, uh, your GPT-3, your OpenAI account. Um, so once you've selected that, just click event here. And then what we're going to say is send prompt because um, this can also be used for creating images, but we're going to be using it to send prompt. So that's selected. We click continue. Uh, and this is where you select your um, OpenAI account. So this is where you would put your API key in. Uh, I've already done that, but um, you'll need to connect a new account and it will just come up with a little pop-up window. It will ask you for your API key. And so you'll put in the API key that you generated on this website here, okay? So um, I've already done that. So I'm just gonna select the, uh, the key that I've already created and then click continue. Um, right, and now we've got a few settings that we need to set up to send this prompt over to GPT-3. So uh, the first one is the model, and I would personally recommend using this one here, the top one, which is the latest model from OpenAI called Text da Vinci 003. Um, and that will generally give you the kind of the best response. It's their latest model. Um, you could, if you wanted to experiment with some of these uh, older uh, models, um, because they cost less money, um, although DaVinci 2, I, I believe, is the, exactly the same cost as uh, DaVinci 3, um, but these are much, much cheaper. Uh, I think they're around about 10% of the cost per token. Um, but in terms of cost, if you're using the latest one here, uh, I think off the top of my head, I think the cost is somewhere around about uh, 2 cents, 2 US cents for about every seven words. Um, and that includes the prompt that you're sending as well. So for these kind of short messages and short emails, you're really not talking about a huge amount uh, of cost, um, you know, really just a few cents for each time you use it. Um, so I'm gonna select Text Da Vinci 03. And then the next box we've got here is the prompt. So this is what we're sending to GPT-3 uh, and asking it to uh, generate the email from. So um, I've already created the prompt here. I'm just gonna copy this from my notepad um, and you can use this. I'll, I'll give you this prompt as well um, down below. So you can just copy and paste this if you want, but there's nothing very uh, complicated about this. It's just, um, it really is just uh, an instruction in, written in plain English. Um, uh, generate a business email in UK English. Obviously, if you're doing this in uh, US English or another, country, uh, you can specify the kind of spelling and grammar that you would want it to use. But I've used UK English, generate a business email in UK English that is friendly, but still professional and appropriate for the workplace. Um, feel free to tweak and modify that if you're not getting the responses in this kind of style that you would want for the emails that you're looking to generate or the messages you're looking to generate. Um, you know, you can play around with that wording. Um, and that will have an impact on the output. And uh, what we need to do here is then put in a space and then we need to insert the body of the email that's being sent to that Gmail account. Now, we have a little problem here because um, unfortunately, this being an unofficial integration, um, if you try to put in um, the body of that email into this prompt here, um, your zap won't work 
um, because um, Google have a policy of not allowing uh, email content to be sent over to unofficial um, Zapier integrations. So we're going to have to find a little workaround for that, which uh, I did manage to find through a little bit of trial and error. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go back a step. I'm going to add a step to this in between the trigger, the new email coming in, and sending the prompt off to OpenAI. So click on the little plus button here. Um, and what we're going to select here is this option here, format, or if you type in format in the box, it will all, all, all also come into there. We're just going to select format. And then uh, you'll see it says formatter by Zapier. And the event that we're going to select in this box here is text. It just means we're going to do something with some text. Click continue. And then um, we're going to choose this option here. Uh, it's got transform. And when you open that up, we're going to select the option, if you scroll down here, to lowercase. OK, so what that's going to do is anything that goes into this box here, the input box, is going to get converted into lowercase text. Um, I'll explain why we're doing that in a moment. So um, in the input box, what we're going to do is just click in that. And then we need to tell it where to find the content of that email, the body content of that email. So we select this option here, body plane. And whatever email has just come in to this Gmail account that we set up there, that's what will get inserted into here. OK, and what this step is going to do is convert that text into lowercase. Now, we don't need it converted into lower text. There is absolutely no reason for it to be converted into lower text. But what this will allow us to do is then use the output of this step um, into the prompt that we're sending off to uh, OpenAI, which is just a workaround because Google here don't want their uh, don't want their email to be sent to an unofficial um, uh, an unofficial integration. But Zapier have no problem with. Uh, their content being sent through to uh, an unofficial Zapier integration. So that's all we're doing is just kind of adding a step here to kind of to, to trick it um, that this isn't coming directly from Gmail. So we click continue. I hope that all makes sense. Um, and then we're just going to test it. And you'll see when I test this here, it's going to take the body of that email and the whole thing's been converted into lowercase. OK, so click continue. And then we, we're back to uh, this action that we created earlier, which is sending the prompt off to OpenAI. And so what we're going to do is we're going to click back into setup action here. And then where it says here the email topic is, we are now going to not select the body of the email from this list here. Um, we're going to select text in formatter by Zapier. And you'll see here the output, which is that email that's been converted into lowercase. We're going to select that to go into there. Um, and it doesn't matter that it's in lowercase because what this uh, prompt is going to do for us is going to convert that text into nicely formatted, professional looking business email. And so um, just in the process of doing that, it's going to capitalize it correctly uh, and put everything back in its right order. So, um, so that's all fine. OK, a couple of other settings to look at here. Um, so you've got temperature. Uh, and this is an open AI setting that adjusts the kind of um, the creativity or randomness of the response. So if you set that down to zero, it's going to be kind of very matter of fact <coughs> and straight. There's, you know, it's, it's just going to um, really kind of just uh, give a very sort of dry response. Um, if you set that all the way up, the top end of this is 1.0. Um, which means it allows it to get very creative um, uh, and start becoming a little looser with the language. So again, you can play around with this if you want, but I, I would suggest leaving it set around about 0 0.7, which is kind of a good, happy medium. Then the next setting here is maximum length, and this is going to control um, the, uh, the length, the, the total length of the output that comes from this. Um, so at the moment, that's set to 256 tokens. And if you remember, a token is roughly around about seven words. So the only reason you would put a limit on this is because sometimes <laughs> GPT-3 can get a bit carried away with itself and you don't want it to then start 
spitting out reams and reams and reams of uh, of information um, and using up all your tokens. Um, so you might want to kind of just restrict it in terms of how much information it's going to generate. Um, so when I did this, again, you can play around with this, but I set this at a thousand token maximum, which really should be more than uh, enough tokens uh, for any kind of email that we're likely to use this to generate. Um, okay, then you've got the next box here, which is stop sequences. And this is really just uh, something we put in here to tell GPT-3 when to stop producing text. So it's not a kind of a character limit, it's the point at which the text. So what I would recommend you do here, again, just to really stop GPT-3 rambling on, and also to stop it breaking off in mid-sentence, um, is put in um, a, a backslash like this, and then an N, um, which is just the, uh, the code for a new line. So when it kind of gets to a natural breakpoint, new paragraph, and it inserts a new line, um, that's when it will kind of naturally stop. Um, that's pretty much it here. These other settings here, I'm not going to spend the time explaining what these all do. If you want to read up on that on the OpenAI website, go, go do that. Um, but we don't need to change anything else here. So just a quick recap. The model we selected was DaVinci 03. Uh, we put in the prompt and we selected the, uh, the formatted text in lowercase. Um, set temperature to 0 0.7, maximum length of 1000, adjust that if you want to, uh, backslash n as a stop sequence, and everything else you can just leave at the default settings. Okay, click continue. And then if you want to uh, just test that, now as it so happens, this example that I've used here uh, isn't ideal because this is actually a quite well formatted email. So I'm just going to go and see if I can get um, a different example here. So just bear with me while I do this. Uh, okay, right. So I have found an, an example here. In fact, this is the example um, that I showed in the uh, in the tweet that I put out. Um, so uh, the the body of this email is Sally. I am starts work at yours Monday from Dave. Um, so this will be a good example to use because that's not very well worded. Okay. So now we've got that example in there, um, and we are just going to pull that example. I'm just going to retest uh, the uh, text in the formatter. So it pulls in the new example here. So there we can see it's converted that to lowercase. Sally I am starts work at yours Monday from Dave. Click continue. Um, and then there we go. We've got that example now in here. Right. So we're just going to go and test this um, in the prompt. Um, so I'm just going to test this action here. So you can see this is what the prompt, that's what it's going to be sending to uh, GPT-3. So it will say generate a business email in UK English that is friendly, still professional and appropriate for the workplace. The email topic is Sally I am starts work at yours Monday from Dave. Okay. Um, and then we press the test, a test action. And then after a short delay, um, we then get the response back from GPT-3. Um, which you can see here in the text field here. Uh, Dear Sally, I'm writing to let you know that I'm starting work at your company on Monday. I'm really looking forward to this new opportunity and I'm eager to begin. If you have anything you need for me to prepare uh, for my start date, please don't hesitate to let me know. I'm more than happy to help you out in any way I can. I'm sure this will be a great journey. I'm excited to be working with you. So yeah, you might decide that there's some extraneous information there that you might want to edit, um, but, um, but you you can get, get the picture there. Um, if you find that um, GPT-3 is kind of consistently making wrong assumptions about the type of email you want, um, then absolutely do go back here and adjust the prompt and explain to it more clearly what it is you require or don't require. Um, if you give it instructions, it will follow your instructions. So, um, you know, with a little bit of tweaking, you can get exactly what you want here. Okay, so we've completed this step here of sending the prompt over to GPT-3. Um, all we now have less, left to do is to um, send the email back to um, the uh, email account that sent the email uh, into our Gmail account. So what we're going to do, we're going to add another step here. This will be our final step. And again, we're going to select Gmail um, as, the, uh, as the action, as the app. The event this time will be to send an email rather than receive an email. So we click send email and continue. Again, you just select the uh, the account that it's going to be sent from. Um, and so I'm just going to select that 
one there, pop the lighter, and then click continue. Okay, and then we've got a few settings here. So who are we sending it to? Well, we're sending it to the person that sent the email to this Gmail account that we created. So uh, we're gonna put in here two, and then we're gonna say uh, new email address, uh, and then we're gonna find the field that contains the email of the sender. So that's this one here from email. Put that in there. Um, if you want to, you can add a, a, a CC or a BCC if you want a copy of that email to go somewhere else. Um, and you can also, if you want to um, put in uh, like a from name, um, so if you wanted to, you could write in something like bot writer or something so you know when that email comes back, you know, where, where it's been sent from. So I'm not actually just going to be able to do that. Uh, yeah, we'll put that from bot writer and then from name, we'll put bot writer. There we go. Um, reply to, um, that's just if you want it to reply, if you want someone to be able to reply back to a different email address from the one it's been sent to. Um, but I'm just going to uh, leave that blank. We don't need that. And then uh, subject here, I'm going to say your bot writer response. There we go. That's done. Um, body type, I would leave that as set to plain rather than HTML. That will mean that any uh, carriage returns and line breaks get put in there without any extra effort. Um, so leave that as plain. In the body, well, so what we're going to put in the body is the response that we got back from GPT-3. So we just click into that box and then we open up the uh, this action here, the send prompt. And then we just scroll down till we find the response, which is this one here. It's going to be called choices text. So you just click on that one there and um, that's going to put that in the response there. Now, one of the things that I quite like to do is to put in both the original version and the response. So whoever sent this can have a look and compare the two. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. So we're going to say uh, original message. Okay, so what I'm going to put here, I'm going to select, uh, just tick in uh, after original message, and then I'm going to insert in uh, the output from our formatting step here. So that's the lowercase version of the message. Uh, I'm going to put that in there. So that's the original. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to put that on a, a separate line rather than on the same line. It's going to be easier to see. Um, and then here, I'm going to say um, uh, bot writer message. And then we'll put that there. Okay, so we're going to have original message. How it was sent in originally, although converted into lower case, is what will appear there. Bot writer message uh, will then appear there. Okay. Uh, Signature, if you've got any signatures set up in the Gmail, you can add those there. I'm not going to bother with that. Um, labels, mailbox attachment, we're just going to leave all those blank. Okay, click continue. And then uh, we can test that action. Um, and then if you're working, if the email that you sent through to that Gmail account was from your own email address, you should now find, if you go and check your email, that a test email has been sent to you with... Um, the examples that we used here. Um, so uh, let's just go and test this. So the last step here is to publish the zap. I'm just going to publish that and turn it on. Here we go. Uh, your zap is on. We can just close that. So, okay, what I'm going to do now is just pop over to my email. So I'm going to test this out. I'm going to send an email now from my own email account over to the bot writer account. So I'm going to put that in here, bot writer, um, give it a subject, uh, whatever you want there. And then we're going to kind of create a dummy message. Um, so I'm going to say here, uh, hi, uh, Ruby. Um, I will order the tiles for you on Monday from Jim. Okay, and I think what I'm gonna do actually, I'm gonna, just gonna make this, just to kind of as an experiment here, I'm gonna make this a little bit worse. So let's um, let's put some capitals in the wrong places here from Jim um, and order 
on orders tiles yeah so let's just kind of mess this up a bit hi ruby i will order the tiles you on monday from jim okay um and uh then i'm gonna press send Okay, and here we are. I've now had the email back. Um, that took about a minute to arrive. If you're on the free Zapier account, that might take uh, 15 minutes to arrive. Um, but you can see here, there's the original message that I sent. Hi, Ruby, I will order the tiles you on Monday from Jim. And here is the bot writer response. Dear Ruby, I hope this message finds you well. I wanted to let you know that I'm planning on placing the tile order you requested on Monday. If you have any questions or need to make any changes, please do not hesitate to let me know. Kind regards, Jim. And that's it. Um, all the links you need will be down below this video um, with some instructions as well. And I hope you make the use of this. Do play around and tweak and find other use cases for this. Um, and uh, yeah, do um, listen out for uh, hopefully some news um, from a collaboration with OpenAI to create an app um, that will be useful for um, groups and people that uh, might need this and hopefully might be able to do uh, something that will either be free or very low cost. All right, take care. Bye for now.